Welcome back everyone. Have you ever taken a picture with your mobile phone and then later wanted to blur the background to simulate a shallow depth of field? For example, I wanted to change this image of our dog Duke from the original to this edited version with a blurred background. Well, let me show you how I did it in Affinity Photo 2. I started with the original photo. If you want to follow along, there's a link in the description where you can find it. Before I get started blurring the background, I think I'll remove Duke's leash. To do this, I'll click on the In Painting Brush tool in the left-hand toolbar. I'll make my brush head a bit smaller by clicking the left square bracket key a few times, and then I'll just paint over it to make it disappear. This area near his shoulder looks a little funny. So I'll click on the Clone tool in the left-hand toolbar, then set a sample area to clone on his fur, I'll hold Option or Alt and click on an area to set the sample. And then just click a few times around the missing fur to replace it. All right, that looks good. Now, before I blur the background, I need to first isolate Duke and the boulder he's standing and put them into a new layer. So, I'll click on the Selection Brush tool in the left-hand toolbar and paint over those areas. I'll speed this up a little bit, but remember, if you want to undo areas that you selected by accident, just hold Option or Alt while painting to remove the selection. And to make your brush bigger or smaller, you can click on the right or left square bracket key a few times. All right, now that I've got Duke selected, I'll click on the Refine button on the top toolbar. You'll see the reddish overlay come up along with the Refinement panel. The selection looks pretty good, but I'll go over the edges of Duke to try to pick up what details of his hair that I can. Then, I'll select New Layer with Mask in the Output drop-down and click Apply. Okay, that looks pretty good. But if I zoom in a bit, I can see some remnants of the rest of the image left behind. We'll work on that in a bit. But first, I'll turn the background back on by clicking the little dot to the right of the layer. Then, with the bottom layer selected, I'll click on the Live Filters button at the bottom of the Layers panel and I'll select Gaussian Blur. And I'll raise the slider up about halfway. Now, if you look closely, you can see a couple of things. First the remnants around the cutout show up more against the blurred background. And second, there's a little bit of what I'll call a halo effect from the blurred layer below Duke and the rocks as the blurred pixels extend past their unblurred duplicates. I'll click Command or Control Z to undo the Gaussian blur, and then I'll delete the adjustment. We need to do a couple things first before we blur the background. I'll turn the Duke cutout layer off for a second. Then, I'll click on the In Painting Brush tool, raise my brush head size up a little by clicking on the right bracket key a few times. Then I'll paint over Duke and the top area of the rocks to remove them. Now, when I go to blur this layer, it will look more natural because those areas of the image were replaced with the plants in the background. When I turn the cutout layer back on, the layer covers the parts I in-painted just a second ago. I'll go back to the Live Filters button and select Gaussian Blur. This time, when I do it, there is no halo. One problem solved. Now, I can still see the remnants from when I isolated Duke and his rock in the first place. I want to get rid of these. This is easy to do, but takes a little time, so I've sped this up a bit. If you remember, this layer has a mask to it. To remove these unwanted pixels, all I have to do is select the mask, click on my paintbrush tool on the left-hand toolbar, and make sure the color is set to black. Then, I'll paint over these areas with a soft brush from the basic category in the paintbrush panel. If you are patient and just go over a little bit at a time, you can remove all of these little bits. In the end, you'll get a much more professional looking result. While you are waiting here, please feel free to click those like and subscribe buttons. 
It really does help to grow my little channel. All right, almost done here. One last thing and I'll let you go. I think I want to darken the background just a little bit. So I'll click on the adjustment button at the bottom of the layers panel and select brightness and contrast. I'll lower the brightness down some. And so yeah, there you go. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.